Hello and welcome. Alongside Adam Cornally, I am Brooklyn Vaughn, and you're watching a special report presented by Owl Sports Update, covering the passing of a Temple legend, Coach John Chaney. Chaney arrived at Temple in 1982 and went on to produce wins, national recognition, a healthy dose of controversy, and of course, a long list of young men any program and school would be proud to call their own. As you'll hear from Fran Dunphy, Aaron McKee, and Dick Girardi, along with John Chaney himself. There's so much to know and so much to learn from this basketball legend. One, two, three. John Chaney hasn't coached in the Leah Corps Center since 2006, but you can't miss him when you walk into the building. His statue remains in the lobby, and there is the actual court that bears his name. Chaney is the winningest coach in Temple history, finishing with a record of 516 wins and 253 losses on Broad Street, spanning across his 24-year journey coaching the Owls. While his success is clear on the court, he was highly regarded as a mentor to his players, which he lovingly referred to as the youngsters. Chaney led the Owls to a program record 12 straight March Madness appearances from 1990 till 2001. During that run, Temple made it to the Elite Eight five times. At the end of the 1987-88 season, Temple was ranked number one in the country. In 2001, he was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. According to a story by Owl Sports Update's Tracy Yatsko, Chaney coined the phrase that we famously still use today, Temple Tough. One of the most revealing interviews with Coach Chaney came in 2013 by then Al Sports Update reporter Shannon Hall Gill with help from our former chief photographer, Kevin Ott. Shannon had the chance to sit down with Chaney at his favorite spot, the Walnut Lane Golf Club. According to Shannon, Chaney always met his buddies there. When I was about nine years old, uh, you spoke to my brother's CYO basketball team down in your office, yeah. and uh, you said something that has always kind of stuck with me, and it's the three R's of life. Oh my God, yeah. Try to obey the rules. Follow the rules. Find out what your role is in society, in your home, in the schoolroom, with your friends, in your community. The other one is respect. Have respect for each other. and taking responsibility. Take responsibility for, you, for what you do. Could you take me into a locker room during halftime at a really, really close game? What is, that, what is that atmosphere like for your players and for you? Well, for me, it, it is so important for my coaching staff to try to keep some kind of data throughout the game in terms of things that I can look at and try to pick out small, fundamental things that can be big in changing the game. Make them think that they can achieve it. Don't put them in a position where they walk out like, wow, we can't overcome. Make them think that they can overcome small items. So that they walk out of that dressing room saying, yeah, we can do it. I don't know if you know this, but um, there's actually a Twitter page called Chaney Quotes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what, what do you think are some of, some of the quotes that you think would be on there? As you go up in life, you should reach back and lift others up. Deal with the known, leave the unknown alone. The other thing is you enter school to learn and you depart to serve. Now, I can't give you any more because then you'll stop looking at the Twitter. <laughs> if you want to know what it's like following a legend or playing for a legend, look no further than the two coaches who followed in Cheney's shoes. Fran Dunphy, the Hall of Famer himself, and of course, Aaron McKee, his former player turned coach. On Friday, we heard from both Dunphy and McKee. He was intelligent, he was a genius, and he was, you know, well before his, well before his time. I, I just think the man was uh, a phenomenal human being who left a phenomenal legacy. And, you know, he was tough. He was firm. Mm -hmm. But he's, he was also loving. And 
there is nothing for him to chew you out on the court and practice, but go in his office and sit down and he'll tell you some jokes and yeah. have you laughing from there. And I think that's, that was his way of, of manipulating the situation, trying to get the max out of you, mm -hmm. but at the same time putting his arm around you and letting, letting you know how much he love and care about you. But he made them all feel good. He, you know, he, he wrapped his arms around you and brought you into his family, into his life. And, and you, you can't replace that. One of the few people who's basically seen Cheney's entire career is college basketball writer and broadcaster Dick Girardi. He covered just about every memorable Cheney moment over the years, up close and personal. From the Leah Core Center to the NCAA tournament, from Goongate to his retirement as a Hall of Famer. He wanted the games to feel like a picnic compared to the practices. In many ways, they were. Uh, Temple's teams never got flustered. Uh, that's because it, everything up to the game had been so difficult. And I think that was the way John wanted it to be. Interestingly, people would look at him on the sidelines and sometimes because he could have some annex, like a lot of coaches think he would be a madman. Uh, but I always talked to the referees and I would always ask him, how was Coach Janey said, the best guy they dealt with? And that's the guy who hurt him most closely, right? It, so he, he wasn't at all like the portrayal of him as this wild, boisterous guy. He wasn't at all. He might yell at his players every once in a while. But yeah, just very unique style of playing basketball. And I think even to, in today's game, I think what Coach Cheney taught, I think it would work today, even in 2021. There was, there was a method to everything John did. He, he was always looking at the end. He wasn't looking at the now. He wasn't looking at the beginning. He was thinking, right, where's everybody going to be? Where are my players going to be in five years, 10 years, or in four years? Depend, you know, how much better are they going to get over time? Here, here's my favorite one. I, I'm, I'm going to lose track of the year, although I think it was 2003. Uh, Temple wasn't particularly good. Uh, and I mean, good enough, but not NCAA good. And John knew it. Uh, so the last game of the year, they're playing at Xavier with David West, who was a national player of the year, and they're, they're getting killed. And at the end of the game, John is fouling on every possession. I mean, they're down 25 points. The people are booing. They're getting more and more angry at him. And, and I'm thinking, well, I'm watching this on TV it, it, from Philly, and I'm going, what, what is he doing? So a week later, we're in Dayton, and they're playing the same Xavier team in the semifinal. And I, I went up to him before the game and I looked at him. I said, John, you threw that game, didn't you? He looked at me and says, just don't tell anybody. And they went out, showed a completely different defense. The only way they were going to make the tournament that year was to win the championship of the A-10. I sat right behind Xavier's bench. Their coaches didn't have a clue what was going on. They were still angry about what had happened the previous weekend. John had him nuts, and he beat Xavier and David West that day. They ended up losing to Dayton in the championship game, but the point was the point, and as we walk, I walked up the, the ramp with him to the press conference, and he sort of put his arm around me and says, now just don't tell anybody what happened. Well, I just did. That's what happened. Dick Girardi, what a story indeed. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Well, when John Cheney announced his retirement in 2006, he reflected on his time as a coach, saying, it has never been a job to me, but a passion. Well, there are not enough words to describe the lasting legacy that Coach Cheney has left on the world of college basketball and beyond. John Cheney finished his career with 741 wins between Cheney University and Temple. He may not be with us anymore, but his legacy will live on. Thank you so much for watching this Al Sports Update special report.